three finished in the same order that they started. And for Hamilton, it's the rarity, and uh, there's not many rarities when it comes to pole position of heading the grid here in Monaco. And his car's jumping like that. He's doing what they call the bike point find. The car's feeding the clutch. Hang on, he's not got away, he's Martin, either. Yeah, he's okay there. In first stint, I can tell you right now, the target is to go as fast as possible and to overtake as many cars as possible. Good plan. <laughs> That's a fairly standard um, concept of going right. I think when you lock your front door on a Wednesday, that's <laughs> roughly why you're heading away. But anyway, um, yeah, Lewis there was doing the bike point fine where the car just keeps feeding the clutch in to feel the two faces of the clutch, or the many faces of the clutch, actually, um, and then uh, to, to help him get a, a start later on. But he didn't really do a practice start in that respect. It, it wasn't the ideal way, but as long as he doesn't drop to the back of the field, the last car passes him, he can obviously just take his place on pole position straight back again so no penalty for him there but he hasn't really had a, a proper practice start and he does go into this race of course off the back of his start in Barcelona where he dropped a position on that uh, first lap and, and almost was down to fourth by the uh, the first corner I assume by now he's actually got ahead of Nico Rosberg although we've uh, not seen it uh, as yet balance moves okay and the track seems to be a bit better than before the tyre is fighting better. OK, that's good. And it's as warm, in fact, the warmest that the track has been throughout the weekend here. That The cars are, are going into this race, the drivers going into this race with a lot of questions unanswered from practice as well because we had a lot of rain on uh, Thursday afternoon. We didn't have the super soft tyre run on Thursday. We had a very uh, truncated session yesterday with a red flag as well on the Saturday morning. So, so there's a bit of a fear of the unknown this afternoon. Lewis is at the back of the, uh, or at the head of the field again, would be a better way of describing that as they file through Ras Cass, one corner then to the end of that lap into the pit bend, as it were, the banana that's the pit straight here, it's pretty bumpy as well, so Lewis will do his mandatory, mandatory for his start procedure, two or three burnouts, sometimes they do a three and a half burnout, not quite sure what a half a burnout feels like. <laughs> But uh, they like to prepare those rear tyres. Hamilton saying on the team radio uh, on that out lap that the car felt a little bit understeery uh, in the low speed corners. Just uh, otherwise you know, feeling uh, quite good. Uh, but now comes the moment of truth. Make sure your seat belts are done up tight, your gloves are on properly. And everyone slots into position. The 19 cars on the grid. Carlos Sainz starting from the pit lane. Lewis Hamilton on pole, pole has won 10 of the last 11, Monaco Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go, Hamilton gets away well, as does Rosberg, covers off Vettel, Fiat on the inside, almost runs into the back of Vettel, who might just nick a place here, and Rosberg squeezes round the outside on the dirty part of track and reclaims that second place. Hamilton leads them up Beau Rivage, through into Massonet, ahead of his teammate Nico Rosberg, Sebastian Vettel runs in third place, then comes the Red Bulls, and Sebastian, uh, uh, Danny Ricciardo and Danny Fiat. Fiat got Fiat. ahead of Ricciardo, down into the first corner on the brakes, while Ricardo was busy checking out the rear end of the Ferrari of his ex-teammate Sebastian Vettel. So the leading Red Bull then, Danny Kvyat and uh, Nico Hülkenberg in the wall at Mirabeau. That's the second year running. We've seen the Force India come to grief at Mirabeau this time last year. Oh, it was Sergio Perez. Oh, it's finished, man. It's finished. And Felipe Massa right at the back of the field. For whatever reason, I don't know yet. And it was a collision with Fernando Alonso, who's going down the inside at Mirabeau, that cost Hülkenberg there. Yeah, Hülkenberg just basically shouldered off the road into the barriers by a sliding Alonso. Alonso down the inside, semi-lost control of the car and just shoved Hülkenberg off the road. A role reversal last year, Perez tangled with Jensen Button uh, in the McLaren. This time, Alonso in the McLaren tangled with uh, uh, Nico Hülkenberg, and it's Hülkenberg that's come off worse. Hamilton leads by eight tenths of a second at the end of the first lap from Rosberg, Vettel, and Fiat, and Ricardo. Raikkonen runs six, Perez keeps hold of that seventh. Then comes Maldonado and Verstappen, and Jensen Button in tenth. That looks very dirty. I said, uh, we both feel very sensitive, but I think that seems okay. Thank you, anyway. Okay, understood. We'll keep an eye on it. 
Alonso up to 11th, but as you can see, the stewards have him under investigation for causing a collision with Nico Hülkenberg. Was that a racing incident, or was anyone to blame, I wonder? Uh, got hit on the rear left. Just check the car. I think it's OK. Copy it. Keep pushing. Can't see anything in the data. Fernando Cruz hit to me. See if you can get the car back. We need a front wing. We'll need a front wing. And he has had a front wing change, as you can see. And there's Felipe Massa switching to soft compound tyres. What is the problem at the front end of that Williams for Felipe Massa? Waiting for a new front wing to uh, come on. He's going to go a lap down. It's going to be touch and go whether he goes a lap down, then he'll start getting uh, held up by blue flags. And I think he had a collision with Pastor Maldonado uh, down into turn one. Maldonado uh, in eighth place at this moment in time, started uh, eighth, has kept hold of his place, and uh, Felipe Massa obviously made a very good start, uh, but then tangled with Maldonado. Hamilton leads, this is the start. Yeah, a decent getaway at the front. It was the Ferrari that looks strongest of Vettel, but then he's engulfed by the two Red Bulls as they head down to uh, towards the breaking point for Sandoval. You can see Kvyat. Oh, Kvyat came so close to losing his nose in there. Let's see if we can see this contact at the back. Yeah, it was just coming out of Sandoval where the Williams and the Lotus were running so close together. You'll see them. Oh, you would have seen them there. Better carry on the uh, the replay. Great start from the two Red Bulls. Oh, and there was, uh, and it's uh, pretty dirty on the outside there. I meant that he couldn't get his, uh, Ricardo couldn't get his foot on the throttle as he needed to, and his teammate takes that fourth place away from him at the moment. Hamilton beginning to stretch out nicely at the front. Uh, he's a tenth up in the middle sector. He's a second and a half ahead. There is DRS down the pit straight here, but it's not particularly effective. He also, Ricardo rather had to get out of the way onto that dirty side of the track, otherwise they'd have had a collision uh, with his teammates. Uh, Toro Rosso's Carlos Sainz, by the way, <laughs> oh, there's good timing, up into 16th. OK, we think the brakes are OK. We think the brakes are OK now. They are not OK. Uh. Still uh, not uh, in the affirmative there from Pastor Maldonado. Sainz is ahead of Stevens uh, and ahead of Mary, the two manners, and of course Hulkenberg and Massa, who have been into the pits. And as you mentioned, Martin, Lewis Hamilton stretching out his advantage. 1.7 seconds now, the difference between himself and Nico Rosberg. So he's out of DRS range with another fastest lap of the race. Sebastian Vettel slotting in to third place then ahead of Danny Kvyat. Daniel Ricciardo, just a, over a second behind him. Then comes Kimi Raikkonen, Sergio Perez, Maldonado, who's got Verstappen right on his tail and within DRS range. And then back to Jensen Button, still running in 10. A second clear of his teammate, Fernando Alonso. If Alonso doesn't get a penalty, and I think he'll be lucky if he didn't, we haven't, I need to see the incident again. He's running in P11 on, of course, the soft compound, the slower tyre, which means he can run long, and that, that's playing that start. Is playing nicely into his hands, and he fasts his lap at the Grand Prix by Nico Hülkenberg, back in 19th place, not quite a lap behind. Massa did go a lap down, so they're they're running at the tail end of the field. But Hülkenberg with great speed now, with a front wing that's intact again. Felipe Massa, who went into the pits, is uh, letting a lot of people pass, including uh, you were mentioning Fernando Alonso, who was actually just a little bit behind the Williams for a brief moment. And losing the pedal. OK, Pastor Rick, help us getting hot, so you need to do some lift and coast if you can, please. That's not what you need to hear, Monica. Okay, we think Maldonado had is struggling, so put pressure on him. Yeah, uh, and I suppose he'd be advised, Maldonado, not to fight that particular battle too hard, Martin, if he's thinking about reaching the chequered flag. Yeah, the, the rear brakes on these cars are very small now because they're mostly slowed down by the kinetic motor, and... So F1 being F1, there's no point in carrying any kind of weight uh, or complexity that you don't need to, or, or cooling that's draggy. So they're a minimum rear brake. And uh, a five-second timed penalty for Fernando Alonso for causing, for causing that uh, accident, which yeah. means he'll have to uh, stop when he pits. He'll have to stop for five seconds longer. You see the big lock-up from Pastor oh, Maldonado. There was contact the there uh, between Max Verstappen and Pastor Maldonado. Through to back they go. Maldonado stays ahead in eighth place. 
Verstappen was just champing at the bit there, trying to get past, but there was no room to go wheel to wheel out of the chicane. He needed to lift off a little bit more than he did. Is there a room to muscle his way past at Raskas? No. Jensen Button catching up on this particular fight and getting quite interested too. He's got a chance down into Sam Devot with the DRS and then Maldonado will break early but he needs to be wary of that go for it Max and he's going to go for it Maldonado goes very very close to the barrier and pass goes Max Verstappen and up into 8th place nice clean move now Jensen Button wants to uh, join in on the fun and no room through into Casino Square through Massonet uh, but I wonder can Button force his way on the inside down into Mirabeau uh, the good news is that Verstappen, as we see their replays, has lost the front wing end fence. But as long as the, the cascade on the, his right-hand side doesn't start falling apart, he'll probably get away with that one. It'll understeer a little bit. He's got a few tools on the steering wheel to help that. Yellow flag. Somebody's gone straight on, presumably down at the uh, seafront chicane, down the escape road. Yeah, that's uh, where the... Uh Yellow flags were being waved, but so far no indication as to who it is. Uh, Ted, down to you. It's a failure of the brake-by-wire system for Maldonado, so these things only get worse throughout a race rather than better. I wouldn't be surprised if they retire that car if Maldonado doesn't end up in the barriers, unless Maldonado ends up in the barriers, of course. So uh, he's got very, very little braking uh, on the rear, so it's all on the front. I just wonder, as we haven't seen anyone... Uh, off the track, Martin, there isn't just a little bit of debris, that, that end plate on Verstappen's front wing uh, yeah. that might just be causing those yellow flags. Yeah, you're right, on the way out of the seafront uh, the, uh, chicane there is where, they, where that debris would be. We saw Lewis Hamilton run over something on pit straight. Verstappen is through on Maldonado. We expect him to close the gap behind, but your pace is good. Oh, is this Pastor Maldonado being retired from yet another race? It, it rather looks like it. And, and it rather looks like another bit of Monaco woe for a man who retired here in 2012, 2013, didn't start in 2014, and has only finished in Bahrain so far in 2015. This is turning into a really wretched season for the Venezuelan more debris uh, even than I expected on the way out of the seafront chicane there. So do they need a virtual safety car to give the marshals a chance to go and recover that? Yes, one? There, is, there is quite a big gap after Hulkenberg. They must have for the marshals about 20 seconds after Hulkenberg's gone through to jump out there and pick up any pieces. But there are some shards there as well. It's always a risk for the for the tyres, for punctures, a heavily loaded tyre. Hamilton's sort of 2.4 second lead now and the yellow stays out they'll have to back off so that they don't show uh, that they're going any faster through the yellow zone it's a double wave yellow now which means men are on the track they uh, have got that little gap Nico Hulkenberg uh, going through while we watch the first second and third and uh, the debris has now been recovered the yellow flags uh, can uh, just go back into their holders for a little while and they can race to their heart's content through that chicane as the leader, Lewis Hamilton, makes his way towards that very spot, as does his teammate Nico Rosberg out of the tunnel, pursued by Sebastian Vettel, and already five seconds covers the gap between first and third. Ooh. And that was actually Carlos Sainz, wasn't it? Uh, and another piece of uh, debris there. Sainz was uh, uh, behind... The end fence. Is that the end fence for Max? I think it was Verstappen's end fence. Uh, but there was some other stuff as well, wasn't there? So there would clearly be another contact through there. But as we pointed out, there was a nice big gap in the traffic while the field's still relatively compacted.